Next, new details about those ECISD lunch ladies fired for taking home leftovers. And we are just 40 days away from the March primary election here in Texas. Find out how you can beat the lines this season. Plus in weather, we are looking for temperatures to cool down tomorrow. Windy conditions as well will stay cool on Friday, but we are still looking at a fantastic weather weekend. Your forecast is coming up. Live with a look at your basin. This is Fox 24 News first at nine in HD. Good evening and welcome to Fox 24 News first at nine. I'm Jenna Sands. We begin tonight out of Odessa where people are having to communicate with people in a variety of different ways. Fox 24's Tyler Westner joins me live in the studio with more Tyler. Odessa police responded to a deaf person tied up with duct tape Monday night after he was robbed at gunpoint. This got me thinking, what do they do when there's communication barriers? Well, Steve Lesweer with Odessa Police tells me in situations like that, they have to write everything down and communicate that way when it comes to language barriers. Lesweer says they have police officers who can speak different languages and they can come and translate for the victim. Well, it's very beneficial. Um, definitely a lot of times without that, whether it's DWI investigation or just a regular traffic stop, it is uh, important and it, it definitely is beneficial to have that, that extra assistance in translating. Lesweer says when it comes to languages other than English, 90% of the time they deal with Spanish speakers. And believe it or not, other than English and Spanish, Lesweer tells me the next most common language they deal with here is Romanian. Live in the studio with Tyler Wessner, Fox 24 News, first at 9. Thanks, Tyler. It was a nice day out today, especially if you had the chance to go out and enjoy this little winter warm up. Time to send it on over to our chief forecaster, Horace Brown, for our first look at the weather. Horace. Thank you, Jenna. We have a beautiful day today. I, I you know what? I can't even believe it. It's it can't be winter, but it is uh, temperatures in the 70s and 60s again today. Changes are on the way, though. We're looking for a cool down tomorrow. Also going to see the winds pick up a little bit. Uh, 45 at about midnight, 42 at 7 a.m. But don't be fooled. Our morning low should be about 38 around 6 a.m. And then 50 degrees at noon. Look for breezy to windy conditions as winds will pick up with the next cold front. We'll have your full Fox 24 forecast first at nine coming up. Thanks Horace. We are just 40 days away from the March primary election here in Texas and as election day approaches, there's one thing that voters might not have to worry about this year and that's the waiting line. Our Anna Wernicke is in Austin with more. When Super Tuesday rolls around, it may not be as super as you may think. More than half of Texans are generally voting before election day. Alicia Pierce with the Texas Secretary of State's office says early voting has actually become the preferred option among Texas voters. It takes some pressure off. Um, the lines tend to be shorter. It tends to be a more efficient way to vote. And if you look at the past four presidential elections, the number of Texans that voted early has nearly doubled. Early voting, a lot of people put a lot of hope in early voting uh, as a means of increasing turnout. But according to James Henson, the director of the Texas Politics Project, it's actually done the exact opposite. But what we've seen, which is kind of counterintuitive, is that even though we've made voting easier by creating this relatively long early voting period, voter turnout has actually continued to go down. You don't have the, the excitement and the motivation around one single election day that you used to have. And ironically enough, that seems to have also had the depression in voter turnout. Anna Warnicke, your Fox 24 at 9. Now, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures, Texas is one of 37 states that let voters cast their ballots early. The deadline to register to vote on Super Tuesday is February 1st, and early voting begins on February 16th. And new details about those ECISD lunch ladies who were fired for taking leftovers home from the school cafeteria. Fox 24's Casey Jones found out what they took and what exactly led to the termination. Two Murray Flag cafeteria workers now out of a job after photos surfaced of them leaving campus with bags of food. This was food that they were not permitted to take from the school because it violated our code of ethics. School nutrition director Katie Taylor tells me the two women signed an agreement in line with federal and state regulations, preventing them from taking any items from the school. The code of ethics that is signed right now by new employees has not changed in the last at least 30 years. I got my hands on that document and here it is. 
plainly stating employees can't take home leftovers. So what happened was a clear violation of the school nutrition department's code of ethics. Taylor explains the U.S. Department of Agriculture lays out a set of rules for all school nutrition programs to follow. Those rules force them to fire the two or they could have bigger problems. When we don't uphold the federal and state rules and regulations for the national school lunch program and the school breakfast program, then we are subject to having our reimbursement and funding taken away. Casey Jones, Fox 24 News, first at 9. Meanwhile, OPD and Odessa Fire and Rescue teaming up to save lives in a different way. The two organizations are competing to see who can donate the most blood this month. It's a part of their Battle of the Badges event, recognizing Blood Donor Month. Organizers expect a pretty big turnout. Well, it is a friendly competition, but basically the bottom line is to save people's lives. We need help, and we're out here asking the community to come out and help us. OPD held their blood drive from 9 to 3 today, while Odessa Fire and Rescue will hold theirs Friday from 9 to 3 at station number 6 in Odessa. And staying in Odessa, the Odessa Board of Realtors releases its housing market report today. 83 homes sold in December of 2015, an 18% decrease from last year. $185,750 was the median price for a home. 390 active home listings in December. That's nearly double the amount from 2014. And even more houses up for grabs in the Midland market compared to years past. The Permian Basin Board of Realtors reports 506 homes for sale in December, which is an increase from last year where 312 were up for purchase. Also worth noting, more homes might be for sale now, but homeowners continue to spend 20000 more than they did in 2013 and 2014. Coming up, the water crisis continues in Flint as Obama declares a state of emergency. Hear what the president said on his first visit on his visit to Michigan. Coming up, a little girl who survived tragedy has to call in backup to help open over two million letters from across the globe. Stay with us. You're watching Fox 24 News first at 9 with Jenna Sands, your local weather authority, Horace Brown, and sports with Jeff Everly. 
The water crisis continues in Flint. The Michigan State House has approved emergency funding. City officials say there is a lot more work to be done. Andy Rose reports. There's some relief for the people of Flint, Michigan. The state house approved $28 million in emergency funding, but the mayor says it's not enough. There have been estimates out there, but that's only about infrastructure, and that's why we can't say exactly what we need, because how do you put a cost on what's happened to uh, what we've done to people? When forced to do just that, Mayor Karen Weaver says the cost to undo the damage could reach $1.5 billion. The city's water problem began in 2014 when the state temporarily switched the city's water source to the Flint River to save money. People quickly complained the water looked, smelled, and tasted off. Eventually, experts found the water to be highly corrosive and full of lead. This is something that nobody should have to deal with. Everybody should have clean water, and it's just a travesty. Lead poisoning can severely affect mental and physical development, especially in children. President Obama addressed those health concerns when speaking in Detroit. And I know that if I was a parent up there, I would be beside myself that my kid's health could be at risk. The governor of Michigan, widely criticized for dragging his feet on Flint, apologized for the crisis during his State of the State address. To you, the people of Flint, I say tonight, as I have before, I am sorry and I will fix it. Many, including celebrities, have stepped up to help the city. A semi-truck carrying tens of thousands of bottles of water arrived at a Flint area food bank Wednesday morning, thanks to Cher. I'm Andy Rose reporting. The price of Brent crude oil is tumbling. It's close to a 12-year low. Royal Dutch Shell says it estimates fourth quarter profit fell by up to 50% from a year earlier. It shares, its shares are taking a beating after that Bob Dudley, the chief executive of Shell's major rival BP, says there's a lot of anxiety among oil producers. I think the industry hasn't seen this since the, the mid 80s. This is truly an oversupplied situation. It is a commodity. It goes through these cycles, but this is a really brutal one. It could go on for quite a while. And, and the oil crisis has been going on since 2014 and no end appears to be in sight for the industry. And if you think an energy drink is just as harmless as other drinks, think again. Coming up, we'll look at the dangers they pose to younger children. And in weather, we are looking for changes tomorrow. Windy conditions with a cold front moving in and temperatures not as warm as today. Notice the 4 o'clock hour, we're still in the 50s. Your Fox 24 first at 9 forecast is next.
And now, your local weather authority, Horace Brown, on Fox 24 News, first at 9. Welcome back. It was another beautiful day today, oh, yeah. but it seems like it's going to get blown away. We gonna, we're, we're going to turn things down a little bit, get it a little cooler. Uh, it's where we should be this time of the year or slightly below. Let's go below. Let's go below where we should be this time of the year. High temperature today, 69, the normal 58, the record 81. 34, the, hot, the low this morning, 30 is the average and 11 degrees is the record. So aren't we glad it was 34 degrees? See, if you were complaining about 34, it could have been 11. So there you go. All right, take a look at the temperatures currently 55. He do point at 27 degrees. Humidity level has went up a bit, but it will go down again tomorrow. Dry conditions with those windy conditions that we're going to have. Uh, maybe some good news is that the wind direction is not so much southwest or west. It's going to be more north and northwest. So a little bit colder air as it blows over some of the snow falling in the Rockies. Temperatures currently in the 50s and even some 40s from Seminole to Hobbs to Carlsbad at 37 and Marfa already cold there and then tomorrow morning they're going to feel the chill again. 33 is a wind chill, not much of a wind chill over the rest of the basin. It, it feels a, very close to what the actual temperature is. 28 mile per hour sustained winds in the Guadalupe Pass still. They've had a very windy day. Most of the area though starting to see the winds taper off. We still have some southerly winds even southwest, southeast and just straight south. But tomorrow again, arrows are all going to shift and become more northerly, and that is again, indeed a colder airflow. 47 mile per hour peak gusts today. Uh, we did see some 20s and even some 30s around the mountains around Marfa and Fort Davis. Those areas did see some strong winds and humidity levels were a lot lower than they are now. They're in the 30s, 40s and even the close to the 50s. A little bit more moisture though as you head further to the southeast. Uh, we're talking Dryden and even Del Rio are seeing uh, winds and uh, winds, wind speeds uh, coming out of the southeast and that's bringing moisture to their neighborhood. For us, we're just a little bit drier and we're going to stay that way. Unfortunately, not looking for any precipitation with the next front. Clearing skies as the clouds roll through. A big picture, we'll kind of talk about it here in a second, but hour by hour forecast does bring a little moisture to the north and then watch this area just falls apart. Once it moves into a stable atmosphere, we're just not going to see the rain, but we will have a couple of cold fronts and some colder air moving in behind it. The warmest conditions will be to our east along the coast, so parts of Texas will still feel like spring. It just won't be here. Let's take a look at the numbers. High temperatures tomorrow, mainly in the 50s for the northern basin, 55 in Big Spring. Andrews at about 56 and for the central basin overnight tonight. We'll look at temperatures in the 30s and then we'll see highs in the 50s and 60s, so it will be cooler. And for the Trans-Pecos, temperatures in the 50s as well, 65 in Dryden, 66, 61 in Sanderson. I'm trying to give them some warmer weather. And then 50s in the mountains, 63 in Presidio. And of course, uh, this is what we're waiting for, though. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, looking at some great weather uh, temperatures in the 60s and 70s. I just don't have the words correctly on there, but <laughs> act like you don't see those. Uh, 64 <laughs> on Saturday, 71 Sunday, 60 on Monday at 52 Tuesday. So we do cool down next week. So get ready for it. I'm ready for the weekend already. I mean, I know it's Wednesday, but yep. those temperatures look great. It does. Looking forward to it. Okay. Thanks, Horace. Sure. NOAA and NASA teaming up and deeming 2015 as Earth's warmest year since 1880. The organization say 2015 steals the distinction of the hottest year from 2014. They add 10 of the 12 months last year were the warmest respective months on record. And get this, those records go back 136 years. And talking health now, energy drinks are growing in popularity, but not everyone should be drinking them. In today's Health Minute, we look at the dangers of energy drinks and children. Energy drinks, they're cheap, high octane, and readily available in stores. Maybe too readily available. A recent study found that over 40% of all energy drink related calls to poison control centers in the U.S. were for kids under six many of them suffering serious nervous system and heart symptoms. A can or a bottle of an energy drink could have as much as 500 milligrams of caffeine, which is equal to about 14 cans of soda. So way higher than you'd want a child to have. Dr. Shu says the dangers of overconsumption for kids and even adults vary from the minor 
as simple as headaches or some shakiness and jitteriness, but they could even be more serious, like problems with your heart rhythm, where your heart's irregular and beats too fast, or even seizures. But it's not just the caffeine and other stimulants raising concerns. The drinks are also often filled with sugar. Too much of that sugar can cause weight gain as well as cavities. In general, Dr. Shu says it's best to keep kids away from anything but the basics. For the most part, all the fluid that your body needs uh, can be found in water and in milk and maybe in some 100% fruit juice. You really don't need what's marketed as sports drinks with electrolytes unless you're doing some really vigorous physical exercise. For today's Health Minute, I'm Holly Furfer. Now kicking over sports with Jeff Everly. I'm, I'm not a big energy drink kind of a guy. I, I'm more of a, the old school coffee, but you just get up, you're ready to go. Yeah, I don't. Attack I don't the day really, without caffeine. Yeah, I don't really do coffee or tea, but I am a Diet Coke addict. Woo, you and our news director, Jay Reynolds. Hey, it's Love a good Diet lifestyle. Coke. And some college students, they, they like to drink caffeine, right? The role of a student athlete is to succeed academically with the help of caffeine. While excelling in sports, balancing the two, not easy. But one Sol Ross volleyball player has shined in the classroom this fall. Katie Reeves, here's Jay Russell with the story. I got a phone call and an email from uh, Coach Danley at Permian. My first priority as a coach was to get a setter. From the first time I watched Katie's game film, I was like, this is the kid I want. Katie Reeves has the moves on the court and shows leadership inside huddles. Uh, I think she brings a calming sense to, to the team. Um, she's very confident in her hand. Coach Roberts told me he likes to recruit true student athletes. Well, a sophomore setter posted a 3.6 GPA, was named to the American Southwest Conference all academic honor roll. We're here to get a degree. Her GPA is one of the highest on the team. The sophomore setter believes her work ethic in volleyball translates to the classroom. It helps in everything. If you have good grades, it'll look good when coaches are looking at you or when you're trying to get into a different school or something it always helps to have. When we have a student athlete like Katie that is doing going above and beyond I think that takes the other student athletes take notice. Two other members on the team earned a place on the all academic honor roll. Reeves gives credit to her family for her study habits. You know, my parents just grounded it in me that it's always good to do good in school and school comes first. Jay Russell Fox 24 Sports first and nine. Love that. Moving over to girls basketball, the Lady Rebels are 4-0 in district play and are playing with ease. Lee had success last season winning a district title, but there's one big difference between last year's squad and the one head coach Monica Ramirez has this year. As she noted earlier tonight, her players understand the value of team. Girls last year looked to two players to do most of the scoring. This year, anybody on the team can make it happen. The Lady Rebels are also smart on the court they take what the defense gives them and exploit it accordingly. And if you were to describe the team's personality, Ramirez uses one word. Lively. This, gr <laughs> this group is lively. Jay asked me yesterday, what are your girls doing right now? I said, well, if you go walk down that hall, you'll probably think they're having a party because they get after it. I mean, they have their, their moments where they know I expect them to focus and get serious, but as soon as I shut it down, and they're loose to be who they are, it is a never-ending party, and the personalities are so diverse. Lady Rebel is trying to go 5-0 in district with a win Friday night versus Abilene. That's it for sports. More news and weather after the break.
You're watching Fox 24 News first at 9 in HD. It's a story that has touched people all over the world. Eight year old Sapphire Terry was severely burned in an arson fire that killed her father and three siblings in 2013. In December, Sapphire told her aunt that all she wanted for Christmas was enough cards to fill her Christmas card tree. That wish went viral on Facebook and people all over the world to send cards to Sapphire and she has gotten over 2 million cards and even had to hire people to come volunteer to help her open them. Wow, that is amazing. I'm that pretty, is a, you get fan mail like that, right? I do not, but that is a great story. That is excellent. <laughs> hey, let's take a look at some other great stuff. Uh, Thursday, Friday, a little bit cooler, windy tomorrow and then great weather this weekend. So get out and enjoy it. Looking forward to it. Thanks for joining us here on Fox 24 News at 9. Have a good night.